Where do you have Sandra? Please help me. His name is John. John what? Farner. Excuse me, I'm back up on him. He's still warm. Do you us? No, ma'am. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Hello, true Kramerers. This is the case of John Garner. Viewer discretion is advised. Before we get started, of course, if you are new to the channel, hello, my name is Mike. I tell thrice true crime stories every single week here on the Yubel Tubles, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So please subscribe if you like true crime. I've been doing this on here for like a year and a half now. I'm more known over on TikTok. I have about 3 million followers or so over there. So if you also want to follow me there, you are more than welcome to do so. The link to that is in the link tree of the description below, in the description below. The link also pops up here at some point in the beginning and also at the end. So yeah, I tell short form true crime stories on two different pages over there, um, at least one to three videos daily, usually like three. In the link tree, you're also going to find my merch store. We ship all over the world. I sell like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. Nothing too fancy, but it's there for you if you want to check it out. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just email me. My email is also listed below. Just email me the name of the case, where it happened, when it happened, and I will add it to that list. And the list is now about close to 5,700 names-ish. So I pick my cases at random to, to be fair. And so I, I can't tell you when I'll get to the case you recommend, but I will get to it eventually. Promise-ish, think, yes, yeah, okay. Anyway, let's get into today's case. The video I played at the beginning was actual police body cam footage from January 2nd, 2018. May Pearl, Texas police were called with this 911 call. One, why is your emergency? I need somebody to come, I need... Please, I need an ambulance. My husband was shot. Okay, what happened there? There was a man in here. I just shot him. And he told me not to call the police. And do you know where the male subject uh, went? No, I was in the bathroom. And he told me to sit down and count to 100 and not to call the police until I got to 100. He said if I called you before he reached he'd come back and kill me. Please hurry. I think he's so loud. He's making noises, please. 55-year-old Sandra Garner had called police to state that her husband had been shot, and this happened while they were both asleep in bed. Just hours before, John and Sandra Garner had celebrated their 18-year anniversary. When they met, Sandra was, she'd already been divorced a couple of times, and she had two kids. By all accounts, John was a really wonderful stepdad to her kids. John was never described as someone who was abusive or anything like that. He seemed to be a relatively good dude. There was one aspect that people would point out during the investigation. John may have had some enemies. You see, John was, I guess, a manager at a packaging plant. And according to some people, John loved firing people. I, I know that sounds strange, but... It's something I guess he was totally cool with doing. Well, he got threats. He made a lot of people mad and this would cause him to purchase a lot of guns. And it said that in the household, there was a gun in basically every room. John was a doting husband. Uh, Sandra had been diagnosed as having multiple sclerosis back in 2014 and John took really good care of her. She said that the two of them had a really awesome relationship. They absolutely loved each other. They were always doing things together. They traveled. She said that he was all she had and she loved every minute of having him. Her 911 call felt real. It sounded real and authentic. The video I showed at the beginning of, of her, you know, reactions during the, when the police arrived at the house, again, seemed very real, did not seem like a performance or anything like that, at least to me. But then here's where it gets really strange. So Sandra tells police that she had a conversation basically with the person who killed her husband. She said she was sound asleep when all of a sudden there were the sounds of gunshots. She woke up, she saw a tall white man standing above her husband. The man was wearing a mask. He had a gun in one hand and a flashlight in the other. She said she could still tell that he was a white male. 
Sandra was begging for her life, and I guess he, according to her, said to her, shut up, I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to kill him. The guy said that John was his former employer and that he, John, had fired him. That this guy lost everything. He lost his wife, he lost his kids because they got a divorce. He lost his income, he lost everything in his life because of John Garner. This assailant, this murderer told Sandra, I know he has money somewhere in the house because he always bragged about it. Take me to that money. And so Sandra brings him to the closet and she opens the safe for him and gives him the money. This was roughly $18,000 in cash. He then tells her, stay in the bathroom, count to 100. If you call 911 before you reach 100 or before I escape, I will come back and I will shoot you. And then that's when the 911 call is made after that time frame has passed, the guy is long gone and police are unsure of this story. Police would interview someone else who was in the house from time to time, Sandra's son, Wesley Miller. He was very quick to suggest who did this, who actually did this. He said his mom killed John. He even told police, I know where you can find the murder weapon. He tells police, well, they have dogs. The dogs didn't bark. How come? How did this person get in the house? There's no forced entry. He said for someone to sneak up on John is very unusual. He said he doesn't buy it. He told police that Sandra used to keep a gun in her purse and that Wesley had always seen the gun in her purse. Sometimes she kept it underneath the seat of her vehicle. He tells police that that is where the gun is right now. It's underneath the seat of her car. Police check her car. They look under the seat. They don't see anything. There's no gun. There's no gun anywhere in her car. They collect 49 pistols and 12 rifles from the house. Every single gun they owned was accounted for save for one a 38 caliber revolver that John had purchased Sandra sometime before this. It was a 38 caliber that shot John. They also felt it was strange that this killer used a gun that was from the house that he broke into. He didn't bring his own gun. He had this plan of getting a mask and you know, wearing gloves and no, and basically getting the money from the safe. He knew all of this. He planned all of it, but except he didn't have his own gun. And so he thought he would just take one from the house. Seems odd. Anyway, after police found out there was no gun in her car, they go back to Wesley and say, there's no gun there. He says, that can't be. You must have missed it. Uh, check again, uh, because th that gun is definitely there. So police the next day go back to her car. Lo and behold, underneath the front seat in a bag, is a 38 caliber revolver. Was not there the previous search, suddenly it's there after Wesley says it should be there. Why would Sandra put it back in her car? They confirmed that that was the gun that shot and killed John Garner. They found gunshot residue on Sandra's arm. Now it was only a couple of tiny specks. Later on, her defense team says, well, she could have gotten those when she was doing CPR because she did do CPR on the 911 call. Also, she was literally next to him in bed. She was bound to get a couple of specks of gunshot residue on her. Police also found that on her iPad, on Sandra Garner's iPad, there was a link titled 16 ways to kill somebody and not get caught. And that link was clicked. They found another search that said how to kill someone in their sleep. This was her iPad. So she was arrested and she was charged with the murder of John Garner. Here's a couple of things that were brought up at her trial. Her hands were never bagged by police the night of the murder. Her car was never dusted for fingerprints. Even by Wesley's own account, that John and Sandra typically were in bed, passed out by 9.30 or maybe 10 p.m. The search searches on the iPad were done between 11 p.m. and midnight. The iPad had no password protection, meaning anybody could have logged into it. When it was logged into, by Wesley's own admission, he was also in the house that night when that search was done, which was done just a few days prior to the murder. Sandra's defense would say, Wesley Miller is the killer. He was so quick to turn on his own mom, he said the gun would be in a certain spot even though it wasn't found there. And then after he says that it should be there, then suddenly they find it. But then I asked the question, if he said it was there and he put it there, how come it wasn't there? right? That kind of confuses me a little bit. Wesley, however, they were able to prove that he had, he had a motive. He was broke. He had no money. 
He also told people that he thought he was in John Garner's will. He wasn't. Sandra had no motive. They could not discover a motive. There were no affairs. They had a very good relationship. She needed John because she had a medical issue that he was doing everything in his power to help her, John. And now why would she get rid of that person? The gunshot residue really was very weak evidence. The fact of the matter is, is the prosecution failed to prove that she fired the fatal shot. I do ask the question though, if she had this lengthy, almost 10 minute conversation with the killer, and she said at one point she saw his eyes when, it, when, they, when the flashlight hit his eyes, she saw them and she said, I didn't recognize those eyes. And also if it was her own son, how would she not know it's his voice? That's my other question. So at the trial, Sandra Garner is found not guilty and she is acquitted. They just did not have the physical evidence. They did not have a motive. There was no uh, money trail. There was nothing to show that she actually did this. But it's just very strange that if this was her own son, how did she not pick up on the signs? Was he using a fake voice or something? I don't like, I don't know. Didn't recognize her own son's eyes, his build. Like it seems, I don't know. And then she, at this point in her life says, I do not speak to my son ever because he did me dirty. He did me wrong. They asked her, do you still love your son? And she flat out said, not like I used to, no. He did me really, really wrong. But that's where it's at. Um, Wesley Miller, to this day, has not been charged with connections to this murder. Nobody else has. Sandra Garner is acquitted. She cannot be charged again. She cannot go on trial again for his murder. And that is where it stands. And so if you by chance have any information on the murder of John Garner that could help lead to an arrest, please contact the police in May Pearl, Texas with any information you have. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know because John Garner still has not gotten justice and John Garner deserves justice. But that is it for this case. True crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. And confession time. This video was initially, my plan was to have this be a TikTok video, but I've implemented a new rule to myself that if I can't make a video any less than six minutes, uh, I can't put it to TikTok because anything over six minutes is just far too long for TikTok. Six minutes in itself is already far too long. But that's my new rule. So this turned out to be about 10-ish minutes of actual footage for the case. That's about as much as I can get it edited down to. And so now it's a YouTube video. <laughs> so yeah, this is gonna be a short form-ish true crime story again, but uh, this was poorly planned on my behalf. <laughs> but yeah, so at any rate, uh, please subscribe if you are new to the channel. Um, that would be wonderful. I would appreciate you. You're amazing people. I love all of yous. Um, I'm also going to try to start going live more often here on YouTube. I need to get back into that because um, I think that might help build the audience, but I'm not 100% sure because we don't know if TikTok is going away or not. It could or it could not. It, it's not even at, in the Senate yet. They may not even do anything with it. Who knows? But TikTok could be gone at some point. So I do want to focus on building this up. So I'm going to try to go live more often here on YouTube. Okay, great. At any rate, high five, bud. That was a side five. Side five. Side five. Side five. Let's make it a new thing. Hey, side five. Boom, done. That's more like a slap. Kind of, it's like you're just slapping someone's, <clears throat> oh, I guess I'm still awkward even in these impromptu ways of very awkward finishing a video. <laughs> I'm awkward finishing everything out. Oh, wait, wait, what? No, what, 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 what? Anyway, okay, a simple bye would have been fine, Mike, but it's already way past that point, so anyway. <laughs> mm.